Hello, hello, and welcome to PD in your PJs. This is Julie. I'm so excited and honored to be here with you today. I'm so thankful that you joined us for the webinar called First Five Activities in Seesaw for grades three through five. I have so many simple, simple ideas and activities to share with you that you can use as you're getting started with Seesaw in your classroom this year. Quick introduction though, my name is Julie. I was a high school ELA teacher for 18 years, used Seesaw every day with 11th and 12th graders, but I also spent four years as a tech integrationist and worked with students at all grade levels, including the grade level you're teaching if you're teaching grades three through five. Now I'm on the teacher community team at Seesaw. I would love if you could find me on Twitter and give me a follow. I'm at edtechjulieJ. And of course you can connect with our whole team on Twitter at CESA. Um, I wanted to take just a quick minute to ask you if you have registered for our webinar called Brand New to CESA Part 1. This is really important if you're just getting started with CESA. I just want to be honest and tell you that this 10-minute webinar is going to be just about activities. So if you are just getting started and need help setting up an account or setting up a class, you're really going to want to join that Brand New to CESA Part 1 webinar because we're just talking about activities today. But we have lots of offerings in our PD calendar for August, so check that out. You'll see the link at the end of the slides today, and just sign up for the sessions that you think would best help you for the um, grade level of your students. If you are not watching me live today, but are watching a recording later, or maybe you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the slide link um, at the bottom of some of our slides today, so if you need to open these resources later, you can see how to do that just from your screen. So we're talking about Seesaw's activity library today and what we hope that does for you is that it not only gives you lots of ideas but that it saves you a lot of teacher time. Um, we have thousands of activities ready for you to use sitting right in Seesaw. You can access them right inside your app and you know when teachers are just getting started with Seesaw they probably think to themselves well what should my students be doing in here or I don't have any good ideas for what my students should post or create and we have you covered. We have all those ideas waiting for you in the library um, and if you're thinking about too that time saving aspect when you collect student responses through Seesaw you're really going to save a lot of time and energy lugging home paperwork because you'll be able to see student responses quickly in one place without having to thumbing thumb through papers so we're going to save you clicks and time and stacks of paper and I think you'll find that is really useful to you as a teacher what you can see pictured in the screenshot there is just a little snippet of the activity library for fourth grade but don't worry, I'm going to demo that for you live here in just a minute. One thing I should remind you about too before we get too much further today, if you already have Seesaw installed but maybe you haven't updated the app this summer, go ahead and make sure you're updated. Make sure your Seesaw is at least 6.0. We have worked on Seesaw a lot over the summer and a lot of new features were released in June. So if you haven't been in Seesaw for a couple of months, please make sure you've updated or otherwise you're not going to see everything that I'm showing you on the screen today. Okay, so if you are new to Seesaw or just getting started with a new class, class, you're going to see a screen something like this. It's going to remind you that you can browse for some ideas as you're getting started in Seesaw. And you can see right there a quick screenshot of what some of those ideas that are suited for your grade levels are. And they would be pictured right inside your app. And then you would see this blue button that tells you you can browse the activity library. And you don't have to do that, but we of course have all these um, ideas and activities built right in. And we just want to show you where they are waiting for you and how simple and easy they will be for students to try those in your classes this year. I'm going to demo that for you live here in just a second. Like I said, um, you're going to see here these buttons where you can filter by grade level and by subject. I'm excited to tell you we go K-12 there since I taught big kids, but you can filter there. You can filter by subjects or you can even search by keyword. And so that's really useful as well. And it's this collection here, and I'm calling this a collection. You'll see that it has five activities in it and it's featured here at the top in this colored blue block. This collection is what I wanna show you today because these are designed especially to help your students get started with Seesaw. So if you're ever wondering like, what could my students first few posts in Seesaw be or how would we use it for the first time? They're all right there in that collection. I'm sure, of course, what's pictured is fourth grade, but I'll show you how you can find it for your exact grade level. 
helpful too. Um, so the other thing I want to tell you about that collection, and it's the one pictured here, regardless of what grade it is, this Getting Started collection, it's actually designed to introduce one of Seesaw's creative tools at a time. So as your students are working through these activities, and even to make it simpler for you, we've labeled them in number order. So if you want to do them in order, you can start here with the first activity and work through all the way through the fifth activity. Um, we've introduced one tool at a time. So just at a quick glance, I can tell you this is introducing the photo tool, like adding labels to a picture. This is the drawing tool. Here you can see the note tool, and this is the video tool. Um, and then here is, um, uh, this is the video tool, and this is a photo with annotation. So you have a lot of opportunities to add different items that focus on learning one tool or one aspect of a tool at a time. And so that's really useful if your students are brand new to Seesaw. They don't have to learn too many different things at once. They're just focusing basically on one skill or one tool at a time. So I want to take a closer look. I want to jump out of my slides and get into an actual Seesaw class so I can demo this for you live. And here I just have a screenshot for you. And I picked music on purpose because I always wanted to make sure that I was including the specialists because we do have activities waiting for you in the library that are specific to like PE and music and art. So um, there's something for you there no matter what you teach. I want to get out of these slides, like I said, and get right into a Seesaw class to demo. Okay, so on your screen, you should see me now showing a demo class called Mrs. V's fourth grade. This is just a class we use for demonstrating, so these are not real students, but I'm just using this to demonstrate today. What you can see here is that I'm the teacher. I'm Mrs. Jacobs. You can see this is a teacher view, and if you've been in Seesaw before, this is what it looks like for you as a teacher. I'm in the journal view now, so if I scroll down, this is kind of what we would normally call like the feed or the journal. I'm looking at student posts. What you'll see here, this gray bar, this is just telling me as the teacher that this particular student post was a response to an activity. And so that's what it would look like if your students were doing the activities like the ones I was just showing you on the screen. So this is how you can find the getting started collections, those first five activities. As a teacher, you're going to hit this add button. Students don't have all of these options. Students cannot browse the library. You are browsing the library as a teacher. So you're going to browse the library. And you know you're in the library because you see this blue bar at the top of your screen. You can see that you can quickly get back to your class just by clicking this button here at the, on the right. Okay, so I'm obviously demonstrating this for you from the web. So I'm using Seesaw on the web right now. Here you have the activity library and here's how you get back to your class and because i was in a class mrs v's fourth grade see that is a fourth grade class see some knows i'm in fourth grade so it's going to show me fourth grade activities right away but remember i can change that anytime just by filtering over here your class is probably set to whatever grade you're teaching anyway so if you're teaching third this is going to open to third and so on and then look at the long list of subjects I have available to me here. And then remember, you can type in this bar too if you're searching for a certain keyword. But like I said, it's this collection that I really want to focus on today because you can really think of these as your first five activities in Seesaw, your students' first five activities in Seesaw. So if I click that, and I think I was showing you this on my screen a few minutes ago, I'm going to see this collection, activities one through five, focusing on one tool at a time. And of course, you don't have to do them all or you don't have to do them in order, but we just created this for you in such a way that you would know that this is a logical first place to start and that these sort of build on, you know, one, one skill or one tool at a time. But let's say we want to do this activity, right, and reflect. If you want to use this in your class, you have a couple of options. I'm just demonstrating this for you in real time, just like you would do it, use as a teacher. You can actually see this here that's pretty cool, pretty neat feature. There's some information about the activity that can help give you as the teacher some context or some explanation and your students won't see this. So this is just a teacher note for you. Your students will just see these instructions if you share this activity with them. And I don't think I mentioned earlier, and maybe you already know this if you're a Seesaw user, but these activities come from Seesaw ambassadors, teachers who are using Seesaw in their classrooms. So the activities are ready made and ready for you because teachers um, have contributed them. So you at least know that everything that's waiting for you in the library is coming from someone who has used Seesaw in this way with their students. Um, if I want to like 
click that heart button, it's gonna give me some options here. And this is the step I could use before I actually share the activity with my students. I can like this item, but I can also add it to a collection. If I want to group a few activities together, this would maybe be helpful if I was planning a unit on um, planets, let's say, and I wanted to group some things together, kind of a way to organize activities. I could put them together in a collection. Um, and I also wanna show you that if you wanna change a few things about an activity, you can basically duplicate it and then edit the parts of it you wanna change. Like you could give it a different name or you could, use a different photo and that might be useful for you and some other activities maybe not so much this one but just so you know you can edit that but then here's the button i definitely want to show you because if i want my students in mrs v's fourth grade class to do this activity remember that's the class i'm in as a teacher i'm going to hit that share button and then i have a couple of things that pop up for me um, i can pick what classes and i can even do more than one at a time i can pick what classes i want to share it with so remember i'm in mrs v's fourth grade and you in your situation may only have one class this is an account that i use to demonstrate for pd so i have a few different classes when i was teaching high school students of course i had a different seesaw class for every hour first hour second hour and so on so it would have been really useful for me to click a couple of different classes at once because i was teaching a few different sections of the same class and then i also can actually share this activity with other teachers like if i want to share a link on social media I have some options here, but this is how I'm going to get it to my students. I have checked the name of my class. That's the one I'm in. And I'm going to tell Seesaw that I'm ready to share it with my class. And then Seesaw is going to give me this helpful info too, just to remind me that as long as my students sign in, they are going to be able to tap activity and see that tap activities to see the activity waiting for them. And then they'll be able to respond. So that's how I get it to students. And you might think, okay, well, how do I get back to see what my students have contributed? Remember, I know I'm in the library because I see this blue bar and all I have to do is click back to class. So I'm in Mrs. V's class and I'm in my journal view, what I started with when I was starting to show you today. But now when I click activities, I can see all the activities that I've shared with my students. And this is the one I just did. So if you're watching me in real time, you know this is the date and time. And I just now shared this activity and now it's waiting for my students. Now, here's what's awesome. As a teacher, you're gonna be able to see everybody's response all in one screen. Now, you're not logged into this class and I don't have students right now, but when everybody um, answers this question or answers this prompt and they contribute their writing, I'll be able to see them all at one glance. And that is particularly useful and time-saving because obviously there's a lot of other digital ways that students can share writing with you, but you're gonna have to click through a lot of screens and a lot of files to see them all. And in this case, I could see all the answers all in one spot. So I'm gonna be able to quickly assess what every student knows without having to thumb through a lot of papers or even without having to click through a lot of things. I'm gonna jump back over into my slides and I will save a few minutes at the end for questions if you want to I click share sort of present if you have questions just type them in the box and I'll get to a few of those here at the end today I want to remind you if anything I talked about today was confusing or you need more help the best place to go is help.seesaw.me you have three different ways to get help there you can search here where this arrow is pointing you can type in a question here that will get more attention from our teacher success team and they can reach out to you personally or you can ask the Seesaw Assistant here by clicking that question mark. So definitely look on help. We have lots of resources there for you. Also, don't forget to look at that webinar schedule. Like I was saying, brand new to Seesaw part one and brand new to Seesaw part two are coming up in August. You definitely can look for lots of sessions that are geared specifically for teachers of grades three through five. And you can watch videos on our YouTube channel anytime. We put our recorded PD sessions there. I hope you can get involved with some of our communities on social media. There are Facebook groups for every grade. So third grade teachers, fourth grade teachers, and so on. So jump into one of those groups if you really wanna connect and collect collaborate with teachers at your same grade level. Of course, find me on Twitter. I share lots of tips and tricks about Seesaw, so I am happy to connect with you there. And if I don't get to all the questions today, you can reach out to me there for more assistance. Okay, I'm gonna open the question box for a few minutes and see what's waiting there for me. And then if I, um, if I can help you with anything, go ahead and type in a few things there. I can stay on for a few minutes. Hi, Michelle, are you hearing and seeing everything okay? I don't see any other information in the question box telling me there's any audio problems, so just let me know. 
let me know if there's anything I can help you with. And then I think this was on the screen right when you first logged in today, everybody, but the slides with um, all of these resources and then the recording are coming to you in your email in just a few hours. So you will get the slides automatically. Thank you, Michelle B, I appreciate that. Um, okay, Michelle T, I can help you with the view all work at once. It's a little hard for me to show you what it looks like exactly because I don't have students answering in real time in this webinar. You're not playing the role of student in this case, but here, let me pop back out. Michelle was asking about, <coughs> sorry, it's not letting me pop out of my slides as quickly as I thought. Okay, um, let me show you where that was. Okay, so Michelle was saying, I am not clear on where I would see all student responses at once. Okay, so let's do that really quick in the demo. I'm in the journal tab here. So this is things that we have posted previously in this demonstration class. Nobody has been posting this in real time. I'm in my student journal. These are my students' names. But if I click activities, I can see all the activities I've shared with students. And this is the one I just shared a few minutes ago, and you guys watch me do that live. So if I click this gray bar, I know I have zero responses and nobody is waiting. And that's because you are not playing the role of my students in this case, so you haven't answered anything. But take a look here. This is where I would see all the student responses at once. Once again, it's telling me I don't have any responses, but if I click here, this is where they would appear. So pretend like you're seeing all of their notes here. What's nice is you can see who hasn't responded. So if all of these gray boxes were filled in, but one was missing, you could say, oh, Lily, I don't have yours yet. You need to finish that. So all the responses would appear here and you would know how many you are waiting on. Okay, I need to jump back into my question box and see what else I have waiting for me. Oh, okay, um, Miriam's asking a good question about um, what if a student accidentally clicks the wrong name and they don't click their own name. Um, you can always click the three dots and edit people to tag an additional or different student on a post. If your students log in with email, that's less of an issue. It's more if your students are on shared devices um, or are in a QR login class where that's an issue, but that's um, those are a couple of workarounds I could think for you. Um, okay, Naomi, I can see a few things here from you. Let me read them quickly and see if I can help you. Um, yeah, Naomi's asking, do students have to see other students work? And that's just in your settings. You can enable or disable that. The settings are up here at the wrench. So when you click that, you have an option. Students can see each other's work on or off. So you can toggle that on or off depending on your preference. You have a lot, a lot of stuff here in the settings, which is in your wrench up here. Okay, so that's where you enable family access and some other things. So don't forget just to, to look there to see what settings you can turn on or off. Oh, Tina, you're asking such a good question. And this is something I was thinking about earlier because I was wanting to make sure we were sharing this in all of our webinars. And yet I forgot to tell you, um, those little icons, like you can see the little icons here, we have those on our help site for you. So it's nothing too tricky. Let me see if I can do it real quick in real time. I think it's called shortcuts when you look for it in our help. Okay, so it's here. Okay, so Tina was asking that. Um, let me paste that in for you in case that's helpful. I'm gonna paste it as an answer to Tina's question. And then I'm also gonna put it in the chat box of our webinar. So just open that and bookmark it if you need to guys. I'm pasting it there so you guys can all probably see it in the chat box. I'll stay on for a couple more minutes if you have a question. I don't have anything else coming in right now, but I'm happy to stay on for a minute if you need something while I'm here. I loved talking to you today about your students' first posts in Seesaw. Oh, lots more questions coming in. Okay, Carmen is saying, can I have work from last year into this year? Um, well, student posts, like are you creating a new class? Because their posts from a previous class won't show up in this class, but if you have created an activity, I do wanna clarify that your activities are associated with you, your account, you the teacher, they're not associated with a certain class. So you'll always have those in your My Library. Um, Dara is asking, how do I share with parents? And we do cover that in our brand new one and two webinars, but I'll show you real quick. I'm in my class here, right? So this is my class. We did the activities from here. But if I go down here, if you can see where I'm in, where I am, I'm clicking families 
and then it gives me a couple of different ways to invite families. Join one of those brand new webinars too, though, because we go through that in a lot more detail. Good question, though. You are welcome, Lynn. Thanks for coming today. Um, Michelle T, can you tell me if you think your students will be QR login or email login? Usually for older students, the older they are, um, a lot of teachers prefer for them to log in with email and password rather than QR code. Um, and so in that case, Michelle, if your students are logging in with email, they connect themselves and you don't have to list their name at all. They just connect basically to your class. Okay, Dara, I will look forward to seeing you in one of those upcoming webinars. Um, Suzanne is saying they have their own iPads. Um, I don't know what grade your students are. I know this is three through five. If your students are used to remembering their email and their password to log into other things, then they probably could log in that way. In fact, if your students are fourth or fifth grade, CESA is usually recommending that they log in with email or Google. Okay, Suzanne, yeah, I would do um, email or Google if you think your students can remember how to do that. I know it's tricky, like the first day of school. Um, my own children are going to be in fourth grade and they log in with um, Google. You're welcome, Tina. Oh, thanks, that's great feed feedback. I appreciate your positive sentiments. Okay, I don't have anything else coming in, but remember you can find me on Twitter at edtechjuliej. If you have more questions, I'm happy to help. Otherwise, I will sign off today and hope to see you again in another session. Bye-bye.